Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game of the recent TSEC Season 15 Super Final. So Round 94 is a game we haven't covered yet. So in this game, Leela playing white, kicked off with d4. The opening book given d5, knight f3, and now knight c6, the Shigorin defense. And here is the end of the book. So short book uh, games, this is one of them. And uh, let's see how the engines play this. c4 from Leela, and Stockfish plays the meek e6. Now, the Shigorin experts and the historical kind of culture of chess shows that bishop g4 is an interesting move in the spirit of the Shigorin, uh, generally, from a human chess perspective. So, for example, knight c3, Morozovic, for example, is a great exponent of this uh, system and has scored well at grandmaster level. Um, this is a con an example game continuation where black might even volunteer the light square bishop. Uh, I guess Stockfish doesn't really uh, buy this, giving up a bishop like this. Uh, so perhaps didn't like these continuations with bishop g4 uh, and just closed in the c8 bishop instead with e6. Uh, we see knight c3, bishop b4, bishop g5 and now here again a departure from human chess. Stockfish chooses knight g e7 rather than knight f6 which has been seen in a few high level over the board games. Uh, for example queen a4 has been seen h6 taking on f6 e3 and this is thought to be okay nothing too massive in terms of advantage yet for white but uh, again stockfish goes its own way with knight g e7 here we see e3 and now very very unusual play uh, not seen much in human chess at all very forcing play we see the move f6 Bishop f4, and now Stockfish unleashes g5. Pawns do not go backwards. <laughs> it was, was a topic of the previous video, and maybe see, seems to be relevant for this game 94 as well. These are very committal pawn moves, and the king has not castled yet. Will it have to go to the queen side? We see Bishop g3, Knight f5. So, as well as not wanting to give up the c8 bishop, Stockfish is also wanting to get the dark square bishop, but at what cost? After bishop d3, h5, it seems as though there's a bonus, not just getting the bishop, but doubling the pawns. So it seems a highly lucrative continuation. What could possibly go wrong with this approach by black? We see h4, knight takes g3, mission accomplished. Getting the bishop pair, maintaining the bishop pair, better structure from a kind of heuristical point of view, the ticks uh, are there, it seems, for black. Black does give up this dark square bishop with bishop takes c3. If bishop d6, then there are problems over here on the king side. Uh, hg, for example, giving up g3. This position with bishop g6 check and taking here shows white in a very comfortable uh, position. Black's king is pretty dangerously placed. So giving up this dark square bishop is perhaps something Stockfish didn't want to do, but it seems to be dictated, otherwise there are major issues. So we see b takes, and now g4, another forcing move. What could possibly be wrong with this? Well, intuitively, one could say that the f4 square could be a cause of celebration if this knight can reroute. This might not be science fiction, this knight rerouting to f4. And you might think, well, hold on, in that event, doesn't black just play e5 or something? Doesn't d5 get weakened? Well, let's see. The knight does go to g1, betraying the idea of rerouting to f4. So it looks as though <laughs> Stockfish is playing in a sort of hyper manner, hyper excited with forcing moves and the bishop pair considerations. Uh, we see d takes c4, undoubling White's pawns, bishop takes c4, queen e7, preparing the idea of e5 against knight e2 to f4, uh, potentially. We see knight e2, and now actually bishop d7 is played, allowing here knight f4. It might not be good in this particular position. And in fact, uh, Lena plays just castling. We see e5 now stopping knight f4, but it does weaken the d5 square. 
and can't a bishop go to d5? Where is the black king going as well? We see rook b1, black king goes to the queen side. Queen a4, this is tactically possible here. Uh, king b8 is played. It looks as though, hold on, isn't there some sort of discovery? Doesn't really work well. If knight takes d4, queen takes a7, and after knight takes, bishop takes, bishop c6, uh, rook fd1 cuts the king's escape square meaning that queen a8 will be checkmate. And if rook d6, that loosens this rook here on h8. White could, for example, win like this, uh, that rook. So king b8, uh, we see king h2, king a8, bishop d5. And it does seem awkward, this b7 pressure, this diagonal pressure. Rook b8, queen c2. It looks as though black's pieces are getting quite passive. Rook h e8 and now e4. So protecting that nice bishop on d5. Rook e d8. Black seems to be indecisive here. Rook f2. This f file is enjoyed by white and a snug king. There wouldn't there doesn't seem to be much possibility of getting a uh, an infinite perpetual check at some point, which has cost Leela many, many drawn games in the past. It seems the king's pretty snug with these double pawns, and the other perk is this f file combined with the f file white could also switch the queen in sometimes via d2 to look at h6 so f6 could become a liability like this uh, so let's see what happened knight a5 rook b f1 rook f8 is played uh, if c6 the bishop could drop back and for example this position as an example d takes e5 is interesting with this idea knight c1 and white has that uh, f file pressure and the dark squares seem vulnerable to infiltration this kind of situation could be very unpleasant as a, as a fictional example uh, where you know e5 is dropping off and the knight's protecting g1 there isn't enough counterplay for black in these situations uh, so if we go back here this in this fictional continuation just to show some of the dangers here uh, well, let's go right to this position actually on, on check. You might have thought uh, instead of bishop d7, king a6, uh, knight e2, rook d2, rook takes here. This continuation with queen f1 is good. The queen is pinning that rook and also queen a1 check is facilitated. So this ends up being really nice for white. So there are various continuations here. Uh, where, yeah, c6 doesn't seem to work out very well, this this whole thing with c6. So rook f8, we have a4, which gives a2 now for the bishop if needed. And in fact, c6 is played here, bishop a2. c5, so weakening d5 again. You might think, well, can't, can't black keep the pawn on c6? If b6, for example, queen d2, bishop c8, d takes is strong here this f file pressure and white's use of the d4 square becomes evident here after queen d4 this looks very very nice for white in fact the e5 break will give white a strong pass pawn in the center with a big advantage for this particular end game uh, so so b6 yeah if we look at bishop e6 as an alternative here uh, to see what white could do queen h6 this infiltration celebrates that f file pressure in this example and white ends up better there so uh, we see c5 bishop d5 a6 d takes e5 and now f takes is played if queen takes e5 here that does give up the f4 square knight f4 threatening knight g6 say queen e8 the knight could switch back hitting c5 and this is potentially very unpleasant after queen b2 looking at f6 like this this f pawn is a big problem if knight d4 queen b6 threatening queen takes a6 checkmate because of that pin b pawn and for example this scenario is a nightmare for black uh, so losing c5 so f takes is played rook f7 
queen d6 and now c4 white does seem to have a very pleasant bishop on d5 a monster bishop on d5 rook takes rook takes we have bishop e8 rook h7 and the bishop seems to be protecting h5 and you might think okay king a7 is played let's see some of the dangers on knight c6 as an example queen d2 gives white access to h6 and controls h6 so for example knight d4 knight takes white can use that h6 square and it's pretty awkward this idea of rook takes a6 checkmate sometimes so yeah king a7 kind of gets that pawn unpinned uh, so for tactical reasons uh, here by the way if there was bishop g6 then queen g5 is nasty with the bishop controlling g8 it's uh, very difficult to do something about that so uh, king a7 seems logical queen c3 knight c6 queen e3 knight d4 and then we have the move a5 so knight d4 did unveil an attack on a4 uh, so a5 protecting that pawn fixing uh, black on on the queen side a bit now here uh, this pawn is just let go with bishop c6 you might find this quite mysterious uh, so why would this be played here bishop c6 just giving up h5 just like that let's have a look what are the problems for black in this position black does seem pretty tied down to b7 uh, if knight takes d4 as an example sorry on in this position after knight d4 a5 if um white could have played knight takes d4 as well with an advantage but a5 might actually be uh, even stronger so let's go with this so why bishop c6 if knight takes e2 queen takes this position white just needs to play queen b2 here to put pressure more pressure on b7 and also e5 is under fire so for example this position there's rook takes b7 uh, just to show that the, the rook can't move if queen d8 then we just play queen b2 looking at b7 and if bishop c6 that's a pinned pawn that just wins material so this is fairly hopeless this look this position is pretty diabolical uh if we look at this again so uh there's not much black can do here uh, if we look at bishop b5 that's pretty desperate we can just say that yeah if that's what black can do that's that's nothing so bishop c6 giving up h5 yeah the pressure on b6 is huge uh we have that pawn dropping off which gives white now potentially winning past pawn for the end games queen c7 knight takes d4 e takes queen e1 protecting a5 rook d8 bishop takes c6 queen takes rook d5 so getting behind black's only uh past pawn here we have rook e8 if rook takes d5 was played then it, it becomes seem you know relatively it seems quite easy for white to play this uh if d3 can be if that d pawn can be taken when it's got that winning h pawn so things are, are getting uh, a little bit easier now for white with this past h pawn in these end game scenarios so the e pawn is pushed here e6 and we have queen e4 looking at g4 black goes uh for e6 potentially here okay not taking on e6 there there are dangers for example rook d8 uh to be factored in here for black's king so queen c8 protects that back row uh now rook d6 rook takes e6 rook queen takes g4 nice pin which uh simplifies the queens come off and this is a, a winning rook and pawn ending for white there are two connected past pawns here and the game was ended here uh, both engines thought white was plus 10. so it seems as though uh leader won this game fairly easily it seems as though stockfish got hyper excited with a lot of pawn moves in the opening and kind of lost some control loosened control of dark squares had problems with the f pawn when it became the e pawn there were just problems on b7 so having to give up the h pawn later gave white winning end games with the past h pawn it seems in a way Leela made it look a little bit easy it seems as though stockfish really hates the shagorin the whole concept of bishop g4 closing in the bishop but then compounding matters 
with all these pawn moves, not even playing knight f6, but all these pawn moves with f6. So it is another classic case of perhaps pawns don't go backwards. It's very difficult for, for Stockfish to understand that concept. It seems to favour its own heuristics for doubling pawns, trying to get the bishops from the opponent, uh, stuff like that. But there are longer term downsides which need to be factored in. Uh, as an example here of how to win this game, uh, here's a fictional continuation. Uh, just move the h pawn, bring the king up to herd these pawns. Uh, this will be crushing. Black's not really doing much. With the tarash roll indicates you should put your rook behind the opponent's pawn spawn. So these pawns just crash through as an example, simple example. Uh, okay, now there are links, very interesting links. There is a report on this whole T set after this uh, Leela absolutely secured victory and the first time a neural network has won the T set super final. There's a very, very nice report by Chestom and they actually comment on me as a commentator saying, uh, uh, King's Crusher, known to his parents now as and, and to others as CM Trifon Gavriel, continues to provide richly informative video commentaries. There's a very nice report link. I'll give in the pinned comment of this video if you want a report of this whole super final. So many thanks uh, to TSEC and Chestom for organizing this fantastic event. It was a blast, all the chats and all the other tournaments now that they're organizing uh, in between for the next uh, TSEC season. It's been really fantastic there. Uh, I'd recommend you know supporting TSEC fully you know on, on the Twitch streams in particular. Great, great fun um, or on the website. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this coverage. This was the last decisive game of the Super Final. Really fascinating new era of chess uh, we, we are witnessing here. So if you enjoyed this uh, game video, please click on the top left box, which should should appear shortly. Become a member at chessbowl.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other games from the improved menu at Chess World, uh, from the puzzle books option, which has a link to the annotated game. Comments, questions, relations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Addendum, here is the puzzle book for the game, Shigurian Defence Stockfish style. Let's have a look at one or two of these. So white to play for a clear advantage here. Uh, this is a bit of an opening test. Uh, so bishop g4. Uh, I think this is a bit too hard actually, this one. Knight c3, okay. C takes, okay. White's fought to get uh, a clear advantage if black volunteers uh, this too quickly here, it seems. Uh, so black has to be careful not to take on f3 too quickly. That was a bit arbitrary. Let's, uh, let's do another one. White to play for a clear advantage here. Hg. And I think we do king d2 here. And now check, I think, is the point. And bishop takes h5 gives white an advantage there. Uh, now here... I think we can take that and I think the idea here d takes knowing that oh I thought it might have been d takes or queen h6 looks at f6 and we can ta take that okay couple more here there was, this was a blunder because of queen takes a6 chatmate and this last one uh, if we played queen d2 we've got the idea of rook h6 with rook takes a6 in mind uh, but first, hold on, not there. Knight takes first and then rook h6. And it's very painful for black. Bishop g6, there was queen g5, otherwise we just take there. Okay, I hope you check that out. And there's other puzzle books there. If you go to uh, like the famous players section, uh, you'll see uh, some very interesting puzzle books to check out. Okay, thanks so much.